Hello everyone and welcome back to Series 2 of the Esri UK Housing Tutorial Series, focusing on grounds maintenance. Today we're going to be creating an ArcGIS workforce project so that we can assign tasks to field workers. At the end of the video, I'll show you how the field worker can view their assignments in the mobile application and begin working on them. So the use case that we'll be looking at is assigning tasks for our field staff to collect information about tree species, health and risk so that we can build up our tree data set, which was originally sourced from Blue Sky's national tree map. We'll be using out of the box tools available in ArcGIS, so we're going to need a creator license in ArcGIS Online and we'll be using the ArcGIS Workforce application. To follow along this video and create your own workforce project will take roughly 10 to 15 minutes. To start, let's quickly go through what ArcGIS Workforce is. Workforce is a mobile app solution that uses the power of location to coordinate your field workforce. It integrates work management to reduce reliance on paper and provides everyone with access to the authoritative data that they need. It's designed to help reduce errors, boost productivity and save money. If you'd like to learn more, click the link in the video description. Now that we've learned a bit about Workforce, I'm going to show you how to create a Workforce project and begin to assign field tasks. Let's start by jumping into ArcGIS Online. We're going to navigate to the waffle button in the top bar to open up your apps list and select Workforce. The start page for Workforce will showcase any existing projects that you have, but if this is your first time using the app, this may look slightly different. To get started, let's click Create Project and give that project a name and summary. Once your project has been created, we then have to configure its settings. So the first step is to create assignment types for the different kinds of work that your mobile users need to perform. For this video, I'm just going to create one assignment type for my field staff to conduct tree surveys, but you can create as many different assignments that are necessary for you. The next step is to add mobile workers to our project, and to do this, you need to click the Users tab. You are able to add users who have an ArcGIS Online account for your organisation, from a partnered organisation's ArcGIS Online users, or users from any organisation. In this video, I'm only going to be selecting internal staff from my organisation, so I can simply click on the users from this drop down list and select the project role that I'd like the user to have. There are two roles available either a dispatcher or a mobile worker. The dispatcher role allows staff to assign tasks, and the mobile worker role allows staff to use the mobile app on their device to receive tasks assigned to them. Once you've added the appropriate number of users to your project, it's now set up and ready to use. I'm quickly going to talk through the Advanced tab, as this is where you can select some further configuration settings. For example, you can integrate Workforce with other ArcGIS applications. In this instance, I'd like my mobile users to open Workforce to see their assigned tasks and then be able to open ArcGIS Field Maps to see the form that we configured in the last video from within this app. So I'm going to add a field maps integration and here I can choose for the integration to generally open field maps or to open a specific map from within field maps. I'll select this option as it reduces the number of steps for the mobile user. I can then search for the map titled tree map, which we made in video one of this series. As we can see, there are no results for this map, so we need to change some settings behind the scenes so that it appears. To do this, navigate to the map in your ArcGIS online content and we're going to add that map to a group. Now when you create a workforce project, a group is automatically created in ArcGIS online for you to manage it. So this is a great location for you to share the map to. If we go to the map and then update the share settings, we can select the grounds maintenance project group and make sure that all relevant layers are shared at the correct sharing level. Now let's head back to Workforce and refresh the page and then search for our map again and it should appear. Now you can select the type of assignment that you'd like to be enabled with this integration and you could even create links between the information that the Workforce passes onto the Field Maps layer. For example, the date completed, 
or any other fields automatically created in Workforce from the drop down list. Now your app integration is all set up. I'm going to quickly go ahead and remove ArcGIS Navigator as this isn't an integration that my mobile users require. So let's head back to the Overview tab of this project where we can now configure each custom map that the dispatchers and the workers will see when they're using their respective apps. Now the dispatch worker may need contextual information for when assigning tasks, for example, the location of the trees and our housing association's ownership data. So we can go ahead and add these layers to the map accordingly. Please feel free to add any relevant layers here that suit your project needs. I can then rename the layers to make it easier for the dispatcher to understand the map. And finally, I can then reorder the layers so that my ownership data sits underneath all the other layers. If you would like to change the symbology of the layers in this map that you've added, you're also able to do so. And once you're happy with the map, simply press save. Then we can repeat the same process with the workers map only adding additional layers to the map that are important for the mobile user to visualise when in the field. Again, make sure to save your edits once you're done. Now we've configured our project completely, we can go ahead and open the project to begin assigning tasks. This is the main page for the dispatcher user to assign tasks to staff. As you can see, there's a map on the right hand side that shows the dispatcher map that we created and we can see a little icon that represents the current location of one of our field workers who is out in the field at the moment. On the left-hand panel, this is where all of the assignments will appear once they've been created. There's a tab at the bottom called Workers. This panel shows a list of mobile workers on this project and the number of assignments they currently have and their workflow status. There are two ways to create a new assignment. The first is to press this button here. Now we can select the assignment type and input the location of the assignment. This can be done by searching for an address within the map, or you can simply click on the location on the map where you'd like the assignment to be. This will populate the location field with an address. You're able to edit or delete this address at any point. As I mentioned earlier, there is another way to create new assignments, and this is by selecting a feature layer on the map. When you do this, you'll see a pop-up that contains attribute data relevant to the layer that you've selected. And then at the bottom of the pop-up, there'll be the option to create an assignment. Now, by creating an assignment in this way, you can see that the location field has also populated with the exact coordinates of the existing dataset. I prefer to use this method of creating assignments as it ensures the field worker is going to the precise location of the assignment that is linked to the data set that they'll be updating in the field. But either option for creating assignments does work. You're then able to select which mobile worker you'd like to assign the task to. Again, you'll see the availability status if the staff is working on break or not working that day. And this is a feature that the field staff can set when they're using the mobile app. I can also see the number of tasks currently assigned to that user. As we can see from the map, this staff member is located nearby the tree that requires surveying. So I can make an informed decision for assigning mobile workers to tasks based on their proximity to the location. There is then the option to choose the priority of the task, whether it's none, low, medium, high or critical priority. And then we can also choose a due date and time for when the task needs to be completed by. The time field is broken down into 15 minute intervals to make it easy for you to select a time, but you are able to overwrite this and write your own manual time if you'd like. Finally, there's the option to add a worker ID. This is usually generated using another system. And then you can also add a description of the task and add any attachments that the field worker may need to support their completion of the task. Once you're happy with the details of the assignment, simply press Create Assignment. And this will now appear on the Dispatcher homepage. And also the mobile worker will receive a notification on their mobile device, informing them that they've been assigned to a new task. So now I'm quickly going to create a few more assignments so we can get an understanding of what a realistic workforce project would look like in full swing. 
If you'd like to assign multiple locations for a field worker to visit in one go, then you're able to do that. I'm using the lasso tool at the top of the map to draw a selection of trees that I would like the field worker to visit. This can also be done by simply clicking on multiple points on the map when assigning a location. This helps to save time for the dispatcher when assigning lots of locations for the field staff to visit. Now that I've generated quite a few tasks for our mobile workers, we can see how the project site looks for the dispatcher. Using the buttons along the top tab, we're able to filter assignments by status, due date, priority, assignee, and assignment sort. You can apply multiple filters at once, and as we enable these filters, you'll see the list of assignments updating to show those that meet the criteria that we filtered by. This makes it really easy for the dispatcher to understand and manage large quantities of assignments in just a few clicks. Now if we navigate to the worker tab again, we'll see an updated list of the worker status and workload numbers for each member of staff. By clicking the sort button, you can choose if you want to view the list of staff by status, name or current workload. Similarly, on the map, if I click on the field staff who is working live in the field, I can also see their status and workload. So in a minute, we're going to jump into the mobile view to see how a mobile worker would interact with the workforce application when in the field. But first, it's important to quickly note a few things about the mobile application. So the ArcGIS Workforce app is included with the mobile worker, creator and GIS professional user license types. These are the same users who also have ArcGIS field maps included, as mentioned in video two of this series. The editor user type can also use ArcGIS Workforce if the add-on license for it is enabled. For more information on user types and licensing, please speak to your Esri UK account manager. Finally, the mobile application is available on Android and iOS. So now let's take a look at how the mobile worker would interact with Workforce when in the field to see their assignments. Opening up the Workforce application, they must make sure that they're logged into their organization's ArcGIS online account. They can then download the project in question. Once it's been downloaded and opened, the user is presented with a map of their live location and assignments alongside their to-do list. The user can pan around the map and see information about their assignments by simply clicking on them. Alternatively, they can swipe up on the to-do list to expand it and view all of their assignments there. These can then be sorted by priority, distance, due date, date assigned or assignment type. Clicking the icon in the bottom right hand corner will allow the user to set their working status. When within the app, the status is automatically set to working, but they are able to change it to say that they are on a break or they're not working once their shift is over. To begin an assignment, simply click a task on the to-do list. The user can then update the status of the task once they've started it. Scrolling down will reveal all of the information about the assignment that the dispatcher set up. By clicking directions, the mobile device will automatically open its default navigation tab and plot the route from the user's current location to the assignment. In video two of this series, we created a field maps form for the mobile workers to survey their trees. And earlier in this video, we added the integration of ArcGIS field maps within Workforce. So if the user simply clicks open in field maps, they will see then a dropped pin in the field maps application showing the location of their assignment. They're then able to select the tree point in the assignment and update the field maps form as we saw the user do in video two of this series. In case you missed that video, we walked through the step-by-step -step process of creating an ArcGIS form in 15 minutes. So feel free to check that video out in this playlist. Once the field maps form has been completed, the mobile worker can open up the Workforce mobile app again to update the status of the task. Pressing finish updates the to-do list and moves the assignment to the completed list. And that's how easy it is for a member of staff in the field to use the Workforce mobile application. Once the information has been collected, it will automatically sync if the user has connection. 
They can also manually sync the updates by pressing the sync button in the top right hand of the screen. If we jump back into the Dispatches project, we can now see that the map symbology has automatically updated to show that the task has been completed, and the task status is also now completed. That brings us to the end of our third video in this series on grounds maintenance. Thank you all for watching, and join us next time for the final video in the grounds maintenance series, where we create a dashboard that shows a situational awareness of our grounds maintenance areas.